I don't think I'm going to take the time really to go through all of these because that would take quite a bit of time. Um, but this is a nice exercise. So what we're doing here is we have five um, different possible outcomes of making changes to the system. So one, two, three, four, five, and six um, are modifications to the original. Remember, the original we had a six kilogram and a ten kilogram uh, mass, and that's the only changes we're making. So we could say, okay, if I change it from 6 and 10 to 5 and 11, then what happens in terms of A, B, C, D, and E? Increasing the tension, decreasing the tension, uh, decreasing the tension all the way to zero, have no effect on the tension, or have some indeterminate effect. So we're really looking at if I change the masses, what happens to the tension. So if I go back and I made some adjustments to that, we made some mistakes. That question wasn't as hard as I made it out to be because given the acceleration, I could have found 70 right away and then just plug that in here to get the 112 versus um, the substitution that we did. So what happens if I change the values, right? So if I make this, um, what do they say, from 6 and 11 to, or from 6 and 10 to 5 and 11. So now we're saying 5 and 11. What changes in our problem? If we've laid this thing out in terms of the equations once, then we can simply look and see what happens to the tension. So if I go to the right side of my equation, if the bottom string is still, or the bottom mass is now 11, then I'm going to need a greater net force on that bottom um, string, so the weight is going to have to be bigger. So I could solve for this. Um, what's 11 times 3? 33. So this now becomes, I'll put this in red, this now becomes negative 33. Um, this now becomes um, 110. So T minus 110 now equals 33. So what do we get for a difference between 110 and 33? We get 77 Newtons. Okay, so we can make some nice predictions with those equations then that changing the mass of the second one to 11, that alone dictates that the magnitude of the tension must increase. Um, if we get down to the applied force F changing, now we can imagine and changing the accelerations and more things will change. But again, I'm not going to go through every one of those. Um, that's good review though for you to go through and kind of see if you've laid out good equations, you should be able to predict what will happen when you change different variables in those equations. So that should lead us to the last one, which is a very traditional uh, AP Physics problem. Um, comes off of an older AP Physics B exam, but it's still, it's a classic, but it's a good one. Um, in this case, we've got a couple of objects of mass, a hook and a, a load there connected by a couple of strings. And we know that that whole system is being accelerated upward at 2 meters per second squared. Um, predictable in terms of what we're being asked to do here. One, create a free body diagram for the hook and the load. Remember, two objects, and we're assuming here, probably says it somewhere, that we assume that the cables and the ropes of problems that we do have very small mass, so we don't have to include the mass of the cables here. So let's do that. So I'm going to take some very good artist when it comes to drawing things. So take a little picture of the hook. We'll diagram that over here. And then we'll take a little picture of the load. And we'll diagram that over there. Hopefully by now you're moving along on your own and you're not even really paying attention because you know what's coming. So we're looking at the situation and we're going to diagram forces acting on each one of those and only acting on each one of those. So let's think about the load first. That's probably the simpler of the two. Um, the load has a, and again I'm not going to really concern myself with values right now, the weight of the load. So I'm going to call that M1. That's what they're calling it there. 
And the only other force acting on it at this point is T1. And I know that T1 has to be bigger than M1G because uh, we're told that the acceleration here is up. So I need a bigger force up than down. Simple. So looking at the load, I'm kind of, what I'm doing is kind of blinding myself to anything not acting directly on that load. Do the same thing for the, uh, for the hook. So the hook now has got a couple of downward forces, right? We got M2G, and then we also have um, T1, right? Can't push a string, so T1 is pulling up on the load, but it pulls down on the hook. And then, let me make my hook a little... Why made my hook so small? Okay. And then um, the force acting up is... T2, and I'm not running out of room there, but T2 needs to be, you know, if we want to be accurate, should be longer than T1 and T and M2G combined. So I have two equations there. So the first thing we're going to want to do is now, or the second thing, is translate those. Some of the forces equal M2A for the hook, and the sum of the forces equal M1A for the load. I'm over here on this side, so let's start there. So T1 minus M1G equals M1A. Over here, we have three forces. T2 minus T1 minus M2G equals M2A. Okay? I drew them very far apart, uh, but now we can start to look at, okay, now what, how do I solve it? Determine the tension T1 in the lower cable and the tension T2 in the upper cable. So I'm looking for both tensions given the acceleration as, as 2. So let's go ahead and put in values that we know. Get this out of the way. So T1 equals... Um, we're on the load, so 500 equals 500A plus 5,000 newtons equals A is 2. So if A is 2 meters per second squared, then... This will equal 6,000 newtons. Okay, so T1 has to be equal to 6,000 newtons. A is equal to 2 meters per second squared. If I know T1, I can plug that in over here for T2 and say that T2 has to equal M2. M2 is 50 kilograms. A is 2, so equals M2A plus T1, plus the weight of M2, right? So that equals, what do we know? 50 times 2 is 100 newtons, plus T1 is 6,000 newtons, plus the weight of the hook, which is 500 newtons equals 6,600 newtons. 6,600 newtons. Okay? It's a pretty um, classic, I mean, that if you can understand what you're doing here, this is a good problem to really think about. It isn't, a, it isn't about getting the right answer, but to really think about what you're doing. So, we must have if this is 500 kilograms, we must have, remember, some of the forces equals ma. So Newton's second law says 500 kilograms times 2 meters per second squared equals 1,000, right? Newton's second law says that in order for that 500 kilogram load to accelerate upward at 2 meters per second squared, there needs to be a thousand newtons of upward positive net force. So if the load weighs five thousand newtons, then the tension 
has to be 6,000 newtons in order to produce the 1,000 newtons of net force. Same thing on the cable. If the cable only has a mass of 50 kilograms for, for 2 meters per second squared of acceleration, we need 100 newtons for the hook. So knowing now that the tension, the hook is 500 plus the tension is 6,000, um, then we need to have 100 more newtons acting up. So I have 6,600 newtons pulling down, sorry, 6,500 newtons pulling down. So T2 has to be 6,600 newtons in order to give me 100 newtons of extra net force. 10 times the mass means I need 10 times the net force. That's Newton's second law. More mass means more net force. So I hope this helps. Um, that's every problem with the exception of that long drawn out one. But um, if you have any questions about these, post your questions on Edmodo. Um, don't post them directly to me. Just post them to the community. Um, someone hopefully will be able to give you some clarity on that if it's not me. Uh, make sure you're prepared for your, your quarterly. These problems will give you a good, uh, I think they'll give you a pretty good leg, leg up on the quarterly exam as long as you're focusing on the conceptual side of why we're doing what we're doing and not just trying to memorize the steps. The problems aren't going to look the same, but the concepts, um, the procedures, the strategies for going about doing them are certainly going to be the same uh, every single time.